Hey hi everyone, we've looked at this question before and what I'm looking at again is this time I'm going to answer a different part of the question. We're going to test a linear restriction on a multiple linear regression model using the F test. I have done an example previously where we test the one res linear restriction using a T test but that's only for one restriction, the F test is more general, it can do it for more than one on one restriction. So let's step through it, this example. Step one, state the null on the alternative. The null is that the restriction holds. We're told that these two added together is equal to one. In other words, those two being the slope parameters. Okay, so slope parameters added together to equal to one. Why might we want to do that? We'll discuss that later. Versus alternative, because the question doesn't say, we'll do a two-tailed test. Now the idea is to compare the residual sum of squares or also explain sum of squares between the two models where the restriction holds and where the restriction doesn't hold. So we estimate two models then because we need two residual sum of squares. One for the model where we just estimate it without imposing the restriction, the null hypothesis and one where we do. So the one where we can just estimate the model freely without a restriction that's called the unrestricted model in econometrics and the one that imposes the null, null hypothesis it's the restricted model. Unrestricted word comes from, I think because the model is bigger than the unrestricted than the restricted. The restricted model is nested or sits inside us. So like you can think it's just a part of the uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a special case of uh, or not even a special case it's a case of the more general model the unrestricted model. So if I can say that again, the unrestricted model is bigger, all right, than the unrestricted, uh, than the restricted model. Uh, it's got more parameters. That's how you can make sure you've got it the right way around. So let residual sum of squares subscript R denote the restrict residual sum of squares from the restricted model minus the residual sum of squares from the unrestricted model. Divided by a number of restrictions, here being one. If I'm sure, just count the equalities that you, your statement here. There's only one equality statement. Okay, it's one. All right, n, well, I've got it from before, it's 160 minus p, we've got that from before as well. Okay, so it's just these two numbers, so we just look up here for them. Okay, is this the restricted or unrestricted model output? Well, we, for that we need to look at this. The restriction was imposed in the above model. All right, so we're starting off with this and then we impose this. So this must be the more bigger model, so this is will be the sum of squares residual. This will be the residual sum of squares for the unrestricted model. And when you impose the null hypothesis, you get another residual sum of squares from that estimating that model, and that was found to be 0.87. So that is the residual sum of squares from the restricted model. The restrict to know you got the right way around, the residual sum of squares from the restricted model can't be lower than for the unrestricted. So substituting the numbers 3.694 if we're doing the test at the 5% five, 5 significance level it doesn't say but in the kind of metrics usually just do it at the 5% critical value is 3.9 where you're looking up in the F table for degree of freedom, the numerator is that one, and the denominator figure for degree of freedom is that figure always. All right. So F exceeds 3.9, so we reject null hypothesis that the two slope parameters add to one. That's it, guys. We have done this bit using the F test. But it says use the t-test. Well, I showed you in a previous example how to do it in the t-test, so I'll let you work that out. Um, what would you notice about these two is more interesting. All right, um, you'll find that they're going to lead to the same conclusion, obviously. Right. Next, why would you impose such a restriction in this model? Uh, okay, I'll give you a hint there because it doesn't really matter too much. Why, in our model here, we've got. Um, it's an economic model of production here. Y is output, 
L is labor case capital. You've got log transform notice. So if you unlog everything, what do you notice this thing looks like? Cobb Douglas. Okay. So what does it mean when in Cobb Douglas when your those powers there add to one? Think about it. Look up the notes. Oh, one thing I kind of just sketch away very quickly from here is that okay, you're going to find that t square is equal to f. Okay, whatever the t square value is, you're going to find that's equal to f. Well, it's the same conclusion anyway. Uh, that's just uh, an an interest, and that's always the case when you've got one degree of freedom starting off there. All right, so here's one restriction. So there's one there, and uh, that's just a number. Okay, that's all, guys. Like, share, comment.